Markets once again closing at new highs. Record closings uh, have been tough to hang on to in the last few years, but our next guest says this time could be different. Here now is Paul Hickey, co-founder of Bespoke uh, Investment Group. That's one of the reasons that we have these great 2019 year-to-date returns, but if you go back two years, they don't look nearly as, uh, as significant. But it's certainly been a good year in 2019. You think we we continue on to more new highs? Yeah, I, I think so. And I think what you, rather than ask people why the market's going to keep going up, I think the bigger question is why do you think the market will, would go down? And do you, do you have any good, do you have to ask someone who's a skeptic, what are the good reasons why the market's going to go down? And I think what's the big difference between now and the prior highs we've seen since the beginning of 2018 is just like uh, you were just alluding to in the intro there with Jay Powell, the Fed is not breathing down the neck of the market, and that's unlike every prior high we've seen uh, since the start of 2018. The market worried about the Fed, so I think that's a big uh, prop. That is, that's a big positive working in the, the market's favor here. Just like the expression, "You never short a dull market." In other words, you have no idea why it would go up. Right. The I mean, same applies the other way. We have no idea. You never know till hindsight why a market goes down. So to say that you can't come up with anything doesn't make me feel. That makes me feel complacent. That makes me feel like, um, you know, that would make me worry if I can't come up with any reasons. And, and the other thing, over, over the years, I'll tell you something. Bottoms, you, you can almost, you, you, they're easier to, to sort of feel sometimes than tops. I, I don't know, true. I don't know I if anyone has ever called a, a top effect. Well, so I mean, really there's people that... That have been bearish the entire time. Well, I see the same guy every day. Yeah, I know. I see the <laughs> so, same guy. That, but um, the, I think what's what's really interesting there is you, you think about sentiment, right? Yeah. And sentiment. Uh, every time we saw a new high after that original high in 2018, uh, investors were you know we were excited. Oh, the new high. Back in October, that new high was met with more skepticism than I've ever seen with the market rallying at a new high. You saw in the Consumer Confidence Report, which was released right around that uh, time of that new high, more consumers were expecting lower stock prices in the year ahead than higher stock prices. There was a Barron's Big Money poll, first time in the history of the poll since mid uh, mid 90s where you had more people expecting professional investors expecting lower stock prices and higher stock prices so there was a massive amount of skepticism on the part of the market and analysts heading into earnings season when we were talking about earnings season coming in in the beginning of October there was the pace of negative revisions was you know off the charts and investors were the, the conventional wisdom was that there's going to be nothing good in these earnings reports to get the market higher. And look what happened. So I, I think you saw typically the type of sentiment that you see, you know, after a market's been down 15, 20 percent uh, rather than a market where, where the sentiment you see when the market. I mean, there has been the, under the if you look underneath the surface of the market, there are people that say it's, you know, the gains are more and more concentrated in individual names, some of the some of the favorites that a lot of stocks peaked six months ago, eight months ago, nine months ago. You, you see some supposedly, according to, to the bears, some tr troubling undercurrents. Well, so energy uh, has a lot of the energy names. And if you look into the small cap area, breadth numbers have been weaker because there's a lot of energy names in, in that space and they're smaller caps. So that has has hurt breadth levels. Uh, in the smaller cap area, but even in the smaller cap, we've seen relative strength start to pick up a little bit. Um, so, I mean, are we going to get 25% a year next year, just like we did this year? Probably not, but there's no, I don't see any, you know, major reason to suggest that we're not going to see at least an average year. I mean, if we got, we're at 31, that's what I'm going to ask you, 31, 33 on the S&P. So, you think 3,500 is on, in the cards? I mean, I think at some point in the next year, just a basic that's on the average return. Much, yeah, it's there. It's it was actually about yeah. two weeks ago, you had a guest on who was talking about maybe seeing a melt-up into the fourth quarter, and she was mentioning that we could see the S&P get to 3,100. Right, I know. That was I two know. weeks ago, and we're already above there. Right. So, um, you know, we, we've, we've seen a strong run. But I mean, 20%, we're like 37, 3,800, right? <laughs> well, the, as the numbers get higher, it, it, the percentage... I know how that are, works, it, yeah. Yeah, no, but it's... Just, uh... You just sort of multiply it. <laughs> uh, but it, it just, the, to hear the, the numbers, that it just typically when we have people on, 
And they're talking about like a melt up. They totally undershoot it because it's the other numbers the sound so crazy. Well, so but, they, but they never sound crazy when people are predicting 2,500 on the S&P. People love the. You know. Well, because 2,500 now for 20 years we were, uh, you know, we were always looking at 1,500 on the S&P from 2000 through yeah. 2013. That right. was the. Right. The peak level. Now we're we're, yeah. we're we're double that, but we did see not a lost decade for equities, basically a lost two decades for equities. So, you know, we're seeing you know these bull markets tend to last a long time, and when it stops, I mean, I we, we don't know, but right now we're seeing sentiment levels that are, um, you know, slowly starting to come back into the market. Valuations are high, so that's one thing uh, that people talk about. But valuations are never the catalyst for a market sell-off. There's usually something else has to spark that.